It's finally here, folks. It's finally bloody here. That's right. My 2022 World Cup Panini sticker album has arrived. And I'm going to give you the first look inside it. And it's coming at you next. That's right, folks. Back once again with a Panini sticker review video. But today we're taking a look inside, deep, deep, deep inside the brand new Panini World Cup 2022 sticker album. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you know where you've been, smash your subscribe button, bang up to the old things, Rovers related, World Cup related, stickers themselves related. We got it all here, boys. Under uh, one Ruski. Of course, I've been collecting these stickers uh, in World Cup form for about 30 odd years. Uh, and today, I believe, rumour has it, that this could be the very last. From Panini, let me know down below if you are a sticker specialist and confirm the rumour that what I'm hearing is true. But anyway, today we have a deep, deep dive into the brand new, unreleased, well, it's actually now uh, released globally sticker book. And again, hot to trot, hot property. I actually had to pay through the ringer for this bad boy. So let's take a long, hard look at it. And of course, later on today, we are going to do an unboxing live, live, live of uh, a box of stickers which will go into this album later so let's take a look at it of course uh, and again, if you do smash your subscribe smash the little bell as well so hopefully there should be two uh, a camera uh, focusing on the album itself so here we go of course the front of the cover is right here and the back uh, of the cover as well this is the american edition you can of course get ones from brazil and there are some special editions out there this is the bog standard version which uh, of course we will be exploring here today of course each one of the 32 nations are on the front uh, including the host qatar uh, the likes of america as well england are in the mix my boys germany and of course wales and amongst the others of course so let's open up to the very first page and we do actually have some stickers in here i'm exploring this for the very first time as you see uh, we have eden hazard from belgium in mind matthew turner goalkeeper there for the united states Yusuf Paulson and La Poitre from uh, Spain. On the other side, that is it. We'll pop these out and we'll probably stick them in another day. So, of course, to take a long, hard look at uh, the role of honour, and that's right. So it does show the winners. Previously, France have come into this as champions, of course, winning over in Russia last time around. Um, last time Brazil, when it was back in 2002, they are long overdue to be victors. Uh, and, of course, a quick look at some colour categories here. Uh, greens are forwards. Uh, maroons is a goalkeeper. Defenders are red. And midfield are orange. So that's a quick uh, uh, a synopsis of the goalkeeper. And as you see, Loris is represented there by a maroon. So let's bring these guys back in. And, of course, take a long, hard look at this as well. Where does it do all that? So it just does it in this corner here, which is a little bizarre. I thought they might have it maybe across the birth dates or something like that. Uh, but all in all, let's take a look at these stickers a little bit more detail. It does have, of course, the goalkeeper, the, the figure, the, the person in question, their name, their birth date, uh, of course, their flag represented by the country, uh, maybe where they made their debut, 2021, uh, how tall they are, how heavy they are as well as up there, uh, and of course, their position that they play. So that's all represented in one sticker as well. So let's push that one aside. Uh, I'm expecting maybe some trophies or some memorable images here, maybe the logo, perhaps. Uh, again, we're going to have to find that out. Hopefully, we'll find that out tomorrow when we do some unboxings uh, and unpackaging of some stickers. These are, uh, must be the stadiums. Of course, the stadiums coming at you. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten uh, stadiums, plus maybe 11 more, maybe the match ball. I don't know. Uh, and again, hopefully, we can get this album complete to see it in all its glory. Here is a bit of a bracket, a schedule, should I say, uh, showing uh, each and every one of the games. Match number one here, Qatar gets Ecuador, actually got brought forward one day to uh, uh, Monday, November the 21st. Uh, I'm just trying to read how all this plans out here. So you're saying, you're telling me all these games are taking place on one day? That would be, of course, a fantastic day of football. Uh, then Tuesday down here, Wednesday, four games a day it looks like. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Also, the groups are represented down the bottom. Uh, so very, very nice all the way through to Group H. And of course, the final taking place on the 18th of December, pre-Christmas Day final. I know we all slammed it when it came in. And, and again, it does come with, with a bit of a tainted tainted controversy this World Cup, but I am looking forward to it none the same. Moving on to Qatar. Here they are. They are the first number team here. Uh, it tells you how they qualify. They qualify as host nation and, of course, their matches in Group A. Uh, again, all the stickers represented here. I think it's a two, two, two pages per team. 20 players, of course, uh, allegedly, or 20 stickers, I should say. Each team will have 23 players in this World Cup. So, um, yeah, some people are going to miss out. Then we have Ecuador coming at you also in Group A. 
uh, can they actually get through the line? One of the fifth, uh, the fifth, uh, fourth best team in South America uh, qualifying ahead of Colombia. Colombia didn't make it. Uh, Chile as well. Peru got ousted. So this is the fourth best team. There's only four South American teams. It's quite surprising. Senegal as well. Uh, also there, of course, one of the much uh, hotly tipped African nations. Uh, I do apologize for the noise. That's my air conditioning. Cranking it up a notch. Uh, but Senegal are in here. And again, hotly tipped to do better, very well in this group. Uh, and again, there are the Dutchies. The Dutchies, of course, represented by, do we have the names of the manager? I'm sure the manager will be on here somewhere. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Cody Gakko is in there, Steven Bergewijn, uh, David Klaassen as well, Frankie De Jong, much talked about over at the transfer window, but never materialized in his move, none the same. Of course, we do imagine uh, a team photo here and maybe the, uh, the, the shiny sticker over there whenever we get. That is in England, over in Group B, of course, a partner alongside Iran, the USA and Wales. Of course, they expect Connor Cody to make it. Oh my gosh, what are they thinking? Uh, who else? Uh, Mason Mount, he's not even getting game time right now. So where's Harry Kane? There he is, he's got to be here. And of course, showing them how they qualified top two in their table right here, right now, of course, and, uh, and their record uh, when they did uh, demolish San Marino. 15 goals in total scoring against them. Around there in the mix. Of course, they qualified top billings out of Group uh, Group A in the third round, also knocking out the likes of Iraq and Co. in the first or the second round, should I say. Uh, key men for them, uh, Sadma Uzman, I would expect. Uh, he is, of course, the creative man who will probably score some goals. Jack and Besh as well, a uh, familiar name to Brighton, if I'm right. Uh, so we'll see how they get on. Probably going to be stiff, to, stiff test to crack down. Here is, of course, my hometown right here, right, or where I live right now is the United States. Uh, they do have some really good players coming through the ranks but do they have the coach to get them over the line? They actually finished in third spot in the CONCACAF behind Canada and Mexico, which is a surprise. Uh, they were also alongside Wales, USA, uh, sorry, UK. Uh, when I say UK, I mean England, I'm England. And of course, uh, let's take a look at this. Sergino Dest, formerly of Barcelona, now at maybe AC Milan. Aaron Long in the back there. Robinson, of course, from uh, Fulham. Zach Steffen, where is he now? He's playing his football over in Middlesbrough. Then, of course, there's Wales. And of course, all attention to the Gareth Bale, based out here in, uh, in USA for uh, LA. Uh, LAFC, I think it is now. Uh, Kiefer Moore as well, who does score goals. Brendan Johnson, of course, the face of the future for Wales. Um, but again, they're also in the mix. And there's Argentina over into Group C. Of course, paired alongside South, uh, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. Of course, all eyes will be online on Messi. They did qualify as second best in the team. They only actually played 17 games in the qualifying phase uh, as the Brazil-Argentina game was abandoned. They never rescheduled that. But I think they were happy with what took place. Of course, and technically, it wouldn't, it wouldn't change it wouldn't change who became winners or not. Uh, and of course, both Brazil and Argentina came out of the qualifying phase uh, without a loss. So they are looking very, very good in regards to form. Uh, then it's Saudi Arabia. I do expect them to get their asses handed to them of late in this group, uh, but they could uh, also prove to be stubborn opposition. They came out top of Group B in the in the Asian qualifying campaign over the likes of Japan and Australia. So they are a decent little team, especially a, a focused, focused bunch of boys. And again, they're playing in similar terrain, similar conditions that they are, uh, of course, to Saudi Arabia. So they should be fancied um, to, to cause some problems as well. Mexico, of course, are in here. Uh, Chicharito, is he still playing? Uh, I can't see him in this stick a lineup here. I don't see him in here, so uh, that is a bit of a surprise. But they do have Irving Lozano, uh, Jimenez as well from Wolves, uh, Hoc uh, Hector Mourinho at the back, uh, Ochoa, of course, goalkeeper, fancy goalkeeper. We do like him. He's a colourful character, and that's what it's all about. World Cup is finding those unusual characters, and Ochoa for Brexco is one of them. So looking forward to seeing him when he comes into it. Of course, then it's Poland to complete this group, Group C. Of course, Lewandowski should be here. Of course, now playing over in Barcelona. They qualified by the playoffs, beating Sweden, knocking out Abramovich and Co. Uh, and also, who did else do they have? They have Kaczarzewicz at the back there, but it's Klitsch as well, still kicking the ball about, and Bednarek as well in defence. Into Group D we go. It is France, the world champions. They are here, of course, qualifying by uh, knocking out the likes of Ukraine, Finland, Bosnia, Kazakhstan, and a tricky, tricky group. They're, of course, paired in Group D with Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. All eyes, of course, on uh, Benzema. He's in here, of course, in number 16 for the Frenchies. Uh, and then, of course, the numbering schedules of these I've just clicked on is very, very bizarre. Uh, we've got Mbappe as well. All eyes on him, one of the uh, faces of the future. And realistically, uh, here, this is his tournament, I think, to show that 
that he is the, the main man for the future. So France, of course, paired along with the Socceroos of Australia, joined by Andrew Romain in between the goalkeeping ranks. He is the hero from the penalty shootout that I think uh, they did knock out Peru to get to the stage. Uh, so well done to them. Uh, Matthew Leckie still kicking the ball about as well. Aaron Moy, where's he playing now? Celtic now. Good, good, good. Good signing that is. Very, very jealous. Harry Suter as well from Stoke at the back. Into the Danes, of course. Christian Eriksen should be in here, should he? He should be. Do I see him? He does. Up there, number 12 for Denmark. So let's try and get him uh, tomorrow when we do, or today when we open up the stickers later on. Of course, paired alongside Australia and France and Tunisia to complete uh, a very, very tricky Group D. They also came through, qualifying ahead of Scotland, Israel, Australia. Pharaohs and Moldova as well. Tunisia complete the pack here over in Group D. Uh, and of course, uh, who's the star man here? Uh, Silamane, of course, perhaps. Uh, Kazari, Wabi Kazari in the, in the midfield there. Um, some very, very good creative individuals as well if they got their act together. Here we go to the middle of the pack here. It looks like we might have a poster or two. I don't know. Uh, it's a bizarre, bizarre thing. What have we got going on here? Yeah, I don't know. I, feel, I do feel this is very cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap sort of paper. Anyway, next course we're going to Group E. It's Spain, of course. Spain are, are, are lacking a talisman at top. They're using Anzu Fati, of course. Not really had a chance to showcase his skills, and he is uh, the face of the place for Barcelona moving forward. They're going to plan a lot of football behind him. But Squet's still here as well. Dani Olmo, of course, controversially uh, selected Spain over Croatia. Uh, may that rear its ugly head later in the competition. We'll have to wait and see as well. Uh, into uh, joining alongside them is Costa Rica, of course coming out of the CONCACAF, they qualified as fourth best team via the playoff, which of course they did knock out New Zealand in the process. So they're there uh, to complete, uh, well, to compete in Group E in a very, very spicy looking Group E. Uh, of course, they are joined up top. Joel Campbell still kicking the ball about Brian Ruiz as well, formerly of Wimbledon. Uh, don't know where he's playing football these days, but we'll find out, of course, when we do some unboxings as well. They're joined by my boys, Germany, and of course, tomorrow I'll be rocking the German jersey as we do some unboxings. Uh, and again, is it Germany, is it Spain, or will Germany have a shitter like they did last time around? They did qualify with just one defeat to the name over, the, uh, of course, I think they did lose to Macedonia, but comfortably through uh, none the same. With good results, including a 9-0 win over Liechtenstein. Of course, their figurehead this time around. Uh, who would it be? Uh, Timo Werner, hopefully he's going to awesome goal. Tommy Muller's still around. Um, Kai Havertz as well. And none the same, of course. Manuel Neuer still between the sticks. And of course, that's a good, safe pair of hands. Moving on to Japan. Uh, of course, a complete Group D. Uh, who are we looking at? Tiki Minamino. Who now plays his football? Uh, where does he play his football? I'm, 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 I'm a little. Is it Southampton? He was at Southampton alone. Uh, I can't remember where he made the move, but he's no longer at Liverpool. Uh, Nagamato at the back as well. Uh, again, they qualified as Group uh, B runners up. Oh, in the Asian Cup qualifying phase. Um, ahead of the likes of Australia who had to go through the sneaky back door. Into Group F in is Belgium uh, and we are taking a look at Alex Witzel still kicking the ball about Togan Hazard and George's brother Eden Hazard which we do have a sticker of already. Uh, Jeremy Doku of course he is the uh, the the future of Belgium's football Belgium, Belgium Flemish Flemish football of course uh, and hopefully he will use this as a great uh, spring ball. But at the back they still have Jan Vertonghen still kicking the ball about Adam Aral as well so a very very ageing defence there so that could be a weak point for the uh, and of course an advantage maybe for Canada who do have a pacey uh, front line so we'll see how they uh, respond here they qualified as group winners uh, over the likes of Wales who also qualified as runners up via the playoffs Canada of course making the return to the World Cup for the first time in a long long time of course had a long winded qualifying phase group uh, round one the CONCACAF uh, coming out on top against Suriname then of course they went to the uh, the final round where they took on uh, and they win they won the group uh, ahead of Mexico which is uh, an unbelievable achievement level on points with Mexico but came through of course in the end. Judah Hoylett will be there, former Rover, finally the first Rover we see or ex-Rover we see in, in, in this. Donar Henry, another ex-Rover at the back, playing his football now in South Korea as well. Alfonso Davis will be the main man for Canada moving on. Uh, into Morocco, they uh, they also make up the, the group in Group F uh, led by of course uh, Youssef Nezri is the key man there. Bufal in midfield as well. Adam Atz as well pulling some strings. Uh, again qualified as group uh, winners over in uh, the African uh, qualifying phase. 18 net 6 for six uh, decent credible, credible unit and of course uh, maybe the, one of the Africans' best strong points here in this tournament. And a group that's pretty much wide open. You'd think Belgium are going to win it, but again, they have that ageing defence. 
Uh, and again, we'll take exp we'll explore that uh, over the next few days and weeks as we get closer to the World Cup as well. Croatia, of course, World Cup finals last time around uh, with, of course, uh, who's leading the charge now? It's still a bit of an aging midfield. Perisic in there, Modric, of course, uh, Vidra at the back, uh, Lovren, of course, some aging players. Kuluta Karl, uh, was, did he make a move to Southampton? Uh, again, so a bit hodgepodgey here, a bit, bit uh, some aging players. Have they got what it takes to make another World Cup final or, or a long run? None the same. Uh, into Group G, we have Boazou, of course, with Edison and Allison, the two top Premier League goalkeepers competing for the number one spot. Of course, up top, we have Neymar, with Charles and Vinicius Jr. leading the line. Gabriel Jesus, Anthony, it's a who's who of talent. Are they good enough to win the World Cup? And it's been a long, long time, and the Brazilians are waiting, waiting patiently uh, for this. Qualifiers group winners, scores 45 points on the board. No defeats as well. Looking very, very spicy moving forward. They're joined by Serbian Alexander Mitro Gold. He's up there alongside Dudan, Dudan Talic and Vlahovic as well. Spicy looking strike force here. Uh, Serbia are there on merit. Coming ahead of Portugal uh, in, of course, the qualifying phase. So we'll keep an eye on Serbia as we get closer. They are joined also by fellow European outfits, Switzerland, in this very, very spicy group. An evens kind of group once again. Again, Switzerland, uh, led by Brie Limbolo, formerly in Gladbach, plays now for Monaco or something like that. Zakira as well, who also made a move to the Premier League with Chelsea over the transfer window. So we'll see how they pan out. Yeah, and some of the goalkeeper, of course, strongest, one of the strongest goalkeepers in this competition for me. Uh, and again, if you'd have a fantasy World Cup, I'd put my money on Jan Sommer and being in it. Uh, next up, of course, the final nation in Group G is a, it's an African nation and it's Cameroon, uh, led by the likes of Chupet and Watang. Uh, and of course, Abu Kako scored a buttload of goals for uh, Cameroon in the uh, African Cup of Nations earlier in the year. Um, Onana between the sticks, strong goalkeepers or eccentric goalkeepers, should we say. Uh, and that will complete Group G. And into Group H we go. Another spicy looking group is Portugal lead the charge. And Ronaldo makes it probably for the last time. Is supported by Moutinho and Bruno Fernandes. Ruben, uh, Ruben Diaz as well at the back. Uh, and a very, very uh, interesting team. They've got a chance here. Pepe still knocking her. He is like uh, the fountain of youth uh, for Portugal. Keeps on bloody playing. Uh, and he will, of course, be with Portugal. And again, experience at, this, at these competitions I know the qualifying wasn't great. They, they, they squeaked through, really, as a, as, as, as a second best, knocking out uh, Turkey and North Macedonia in the playoffs. But, you know, when it gets to this stage, the experience of the likes of Pepe, of Ronaldo, will be absolutely massive. They are, of course, are joined by Ghana as well in Group G, uh, led by the IUs. Of course, Jordan and Andre, both, of course, getting on a little bit as well. Thomas Partey as well, still uh, competing in the mix. Jonathan Mensah at the back, alongside Jindan Mensah in the Mensah house. And Joe Wallacott plays low league football for England, or at least the League Two anyway, I think, for Swindon. So, interesting uh, uh, scenario there. They've also got some other players trying to get them in via the back door, I think Hudson Adoy or somebody like that. Some some uh, some players that have got distant relatives in the Ghana Ghana uh, heritage, I guess they're trying to get them involved for the World Cup. Of course, joining them will be Uruguay, and of course it will be Luis Suarez's final farewell, and Edison Gavani, an aging strike force. But they're supported by Darwin Nunes, of course Liverpool's new signing, expensive signing coming in. Lucas Torreira as well in midfield to pull some strings, or of course dictate some play. And Diego got it at the back. And again, these experience has been there and seen it and done it. And they were old. They were old in the last World Cup in Russia, but now they are veterans. And they, of course, are going to try one more time for the nation to get very, very far in this tournament. And then wrapping it up, I think it is Korea, led by, of course, Son Yun Min from Spurs, uh, joined by the logs of uh, Jae Song Lee uh, in the middle, He Wang Huang, He Cheng Wang, sorry, of course, uh, and Sung Jung Kim at the back there in the goalkeeping jerseys. Uh, of course, this completes the set. They, of course, came, came second behind Iran in the Asian qualifying business. Uh, of course, there's a bit of a, a, a museum piece here at the back of the sticker book here. Uh, in in page 75 uh, and some more memories uh, of course including Russia as well Germany winning in 2014 happy days maybe some winning jerseys of course 1990 was uh, my first real World Cup I did remember vaguely the Argentina one uh, and then here's some more bits and pieces a quick snapshot of uh, of the teams, how they got there, the final game, I guess, to, to secure the deal. Uh, Germany, uh, England's 10 year win over San Marino, or maybe the highlight, I don't know what it is. But regardless, I am looking forward to it. Got more stickers here, guys, more stickers at the back. Who do we have? We've got these guys, Ji Sung Lee, we talked about you just now. Linkovic, of course, between six, Croatia, Moses Kaedo, uh, Rodrigo de Paul, Kamar Miller, and Hassan Hayedos. That, my friends, is just about it. Of course, we're going to close up the deal. And tomorrow, or today, later today, it is tomorrow, because it's. I'm 
I'm going to record this Saturday, but later today, of course, this video will be dropping on Sunday. We're going to do an unboxing uh, a box of stickers coming at you from Panini, and we're going to unbox them live, and you get to see, as I do, as we unbox the pack of stickers. So make sure you smash your subscribe, smash the thumbs up, smash the little bell, and of course, come back for that later on today. But until then, guys and girls, we'll, we'll be back. Uh, of course, your one-stop shop for the World Cup is here, so make sure you subscribe. And of course, if you're watching this at the right time, go ahead and vote, vote, vote. Cut the forward slash vote rubber seeds for the best in content, best uh, uh, club content creator for a football league, and also best content creator as a whole. You could do this, guys. Lastminute.com. Let's get the votes in and get some credit on the channel. But until then, guys and girls, we're done.